Okay, I think Ajay has said something, so I'll read that. Once intellectually, uh, truth is grasped, then acting from uh, and that knowledge is a challenge uh, because of the habitual patterns and acting from ignorance. How to act from the knowledge instead of habitual ignorance? The answer is only when. It is awareness. Since you have grasped, grasped it intellectually, whenever you act, you bring this understanding in the mind. You remember this. And if there is awareness, you can make a choice. A habit can be overridden by another habit. Habits do not die off. You will need to substitute it with something else. As long as there is acting, it will come from memory. And now it is com coming from the old memory. You need to choose and let the action happen from the knowledge. Whichever, whatever is intellectual knowledge, your knowledge. And uh, you will get the verification of it uh, when you practice like this. The intellectual will become uh, real. By real, I mean there will be a practical example of it in front of you. No more intellectual only. So awareness is the key. Whenever you are acting, train your mind to become aware. I am going to act from uh, habit now. Switch the action to something else which you think is the right action. Or most of the suffering is uh, in the form of thoughts. So you can bring your awareness like this. Remember the intellectual knowledge and put it into practice. Right? When I say it, it looks like it is a long procedure. But in my experience, it takes less than one second to do that, to remember. And yes, you will fail many, many times till the new habit takes over the old one. The new habit is whenever mind starts doing something like this, it will itself be reminded and itself will terminate. So if you do it, it will stop the habit. Now this is, this is happening totally in the mind. So easy. But let us say there is some uh, uh, habit of the body like smoking or drinking or something like this. Again, awareness. And this time it is going to take a longer time. Every, every task that we take up which involves some kind of change looks hard in the beginning. Now you can uh, recall your experience of riding the bicycle. Very, very hard. <laughs> so many times. We fell. But once we learned the balance, it became a natural thing. Now, without thinking, we can ride. Same thing when we learn a new language. So hard. It, it takes a lot of effort to switch to the other language when we are learning that language. So it's always hard. Whenever the mind is to be changed, it will be hard to change it initially. But if you keep doing it, that is why it is called a practice. That is why it is called sadhana. Or tapasya, because it is hard. <laughs> now, if you don't do it because it is hard, then it will never happen. It will remain the same mind which it is. Even if you do it very slowly, you know, if you are progressing just a centimeter every day, still you, there is a hope that you will reach there. But uh, if you don't even start somewhere, then no, there is no hope. A slow progress is better than no progress. It does not matter as long as you are moving. As, as soon as you stop, well, it's back to the square one. No amount of intellectual knowledge will substitute for practice. And, but fortunately, the practice is very simple. It involves remembering, involves bringing the awareness that this is mind, this is me. I separate the two. Now look at the mind and switch to the other choice if you have the other choice now consider yourself very very fortunate because most of the people don't have the other choice they do it as if that is the only choice they have or some people will further delude themselves it is my choice it is my free will and that's why i'm doing this you see the cigarette is controlling them and they say this is my free will i'll i'll stop whenever i want <laughs> so on or their negativity jealousy or anger is controlling them and they say oh it is the injustice 
that I am fighting for and I have the right to be angry. And what is the truth? The truth is mechanical action is happening in the mind. <laughs> the ego comes and takes responsibility of it, owns it. It is mine. I am thinking it and I am free to think it. And therefore, I am thinking it. So you can see the joke here. The mind itself deludes itself. So uh, you cannot change the mind from the mind. You need to stand one, one uh, uh, step higher than the mind. On the ladder, on the layers of the mind, you will need to stand on the higher side. Bring on the awareness. You are faced with the choice, like should I act from the old or should ig ignorance or should I act from the new knowledge? Choose the new one and, and the mind will not do it. The mind is a machine, you see. It will do that which, is, which it is programmed to do, which is its habit. Habit is nothing, a program only. Some impression on the memory and the actions happen through that. So you will need to be above the memory. You will, be, you will need to be above mind in order to have some control on the mind. Now what happens is awareness also does not do anything. Awareness simply illuminates the other choice. It illuminates the other choice. Then sometimes the mind will take the other choice. And if the, if the what do you call, the fruits, if the results of that other choice are favorable, then the mind will keep doing it. Otherwise not. Initially, you may find that the uh, fruits of the new choice are, they look like negative. And that's why this failure happens. Oh, no, 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 this is too much. I'll go back to my old thing. <laughs> And this is, I've seen this so much actually. I'm talking from my own experience. It is still happening to me. You see, we are all here. We are not free from the world. What does it mean? It means that the total control is still not there. It will prefer the old for some time till the fruits of the new manifest. And then here a little bit of faith comes. Have some faith on the new. Those who don't have faith should have a mind of a scientist. Let me see. I need to experiment like this. So these little life experiments, you need to do it again and again and again. Now once in a while you do the old also and immediately you can judge your progress. You can see the contrast. Like I'll tell you my example, you know, I was, I got into habitual lying for some reason. <laughs> Bad company probably. I thought I'm doing it because I'm smart. When I lie, nobody can find out that I'm lying. And uh, I'm doing it because it's my free will. That's what I enjoy. And obviously the mind will enjoy these things. That's why people habitually lie. That's why people have, are fake. Most of them are fakes. So why? Because mind is trapped into this mechanical action. And uh, there are some short-term advantages in lying. So it keeps doing it. The fruits keep coming. And it keeps ignoring that which is causing suffering. The lying is going to cause a lot of suffering. So it keeps ignoring, no, 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 this uh, bad luck didn't happen. I'll lie double and then probably I'll cover up everything. Nobody will know. And this is how it was going on. And suddenly I realized the value of speaking truth. Because when you say, I'm the truth seeker, I'm the seeker and I'm, I want to know the truth. And you are talking lies, then it does not compute. The mind can sense so something is wrong here. So... And then the experiment started that let me see if I avoid lying as much as possible. And uh, this went on for a few years. And uh, on the occasions where I had to lie, you know, the contrast was huge, huge. Because when you talk true, you forget about it. And no impressions are made on the mind. You must have noticed the mind is light like air. Like a feather, it remains light. When you have spoken the truth, it is done, it's gone. But lie, even a little tiny bit of lie, it will stick on the mind. It will remain there. And once you have gotten the fruits of telling truth, always speaking truth, your mind will shift to truth and then it will start seeing lying as suffering. Previously, it was opposite. So the fruits came later and I, I came to know this difference only when I had to lie. Or I thought, let me be smart this time and lie again. And then the suffering was too much. It got impressed on the mind. Oh, I lied that day. And uh, you see, for a seeker, the fruits will come very quickly. And <laughs> something really, really bad would happen whenever I lie. 
So this is how we switch to the to acting from knowledge, evolving further. It takes patience, a little bit of faith, a little bit of experimentation, a little bit of intellect. Always compare your old habit with the new one, because always talking true is also a habit. We prefer it. That's all. See, mind is only memory. It is all all habits, all programs. There's nothing else there. So what 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 happens is the mind prefers that which gives it more happiness and freedom. That is how it is programmed, and that is how is the you can say flow of this universal mind. All the minds prefer happiness and freedom, or that which they prefer. We call it happiness and freedom. And like in this example, telling truth. It give, gives a lot of freedom. Now you're not bound to anything. Now you're not responsible for anything. There are no chains. There are no guilts. There are no no worry about bad consequences of what I've done. What is this? Freedom. Now you are in the flow. You are in the flow of the universal mind. So once the mind knows this, now it has become its own experience. It will not go into that which caused bondage, which caused which which. Cause suffering not only for me, but for others. So it will prefer long-term happiness instead of short-term. It will prefer long-term freedom instead of, and it will it will say, okay, if it's a short-term suffering, I'll take the short-term suffering instead of long-term bondage. It will do that. The intellect will mature like this. So sometimes you suffer a little bit, like a bitter medicine, but the, but the disease is gone forever. So experiment a little bit. Uh, bit by bit, if you think that I'll change into something <laughs> which is, you know, totally beyond human in one day, uh, it's kind of impossible. So yes, there will be many, many failures, many, many failures. And that's why many times I say this. It's my favorite saying that we are on the spiritual path, not because it is easy, not because it's all you know rainbows and. Uh, Pretty butterflies and stuff, red carpet. No, it's not like this. We are on the spiritual path because it is hard, because it is challenging, because nobody does it. That's why we do it. That's why we have taken the evolution of the mind in our own hands. It takes a little bit of fruit to, you see, for the mind to accept this challenge. It will. It won't do it till you practice it. So I saw this on the face of. The gurus, I saw that they are so confident, so free, although not so happy, <laughs> but, but they looked very peaceful. This is how you are motivated because initially the mind has no idea what this knowledge is going to do. It will actually be afraid of this knowledge. So you will need to take motivation from somebody else in, in the beginning. Have an ideal. Have a guru. Guru is very important. You will see the guru in front of you, and you will see how it has transformed the guru. How these little experiments have transformed him, and then your mind will be convinced, and then it will act without knowing that what will be the fruit of my new action. You see, novelty is terrifying for the ego. It wants to settle in the known instead of venturing into the unknown. This is our evolution, because unknown always meant risk in the old days. Getting out of the house, getting out of the village, and your known territory means instant death in the old times. And this is the conditioning of the mind. It won't take up anything new because fear, and this is also the fear of failure. Oh, it's a waste of time. I'm going to fail. I'm already perfect the way I am, and this will prevent the progress. Now, just like you, you know, I am not special. I am also struggling. It is a fight. It is every day fight. It is every minute fight. Actually, the seeker looks very peaceful, but a war is going on inside his mind. Nobody will believe this. People come and see me. Oh, you are not troubled by anything. You don't worry about anything, and uh, you are not afraid of anything. They don't know what is going on inside. <laughs> it is a war. Inside, a seeker is not free from anger, fear, lust, or jealousy, or expectations, attachments. Not free from that. 
as long as there is ego there is body there is mind there will be all these things the only difference between uh, uh, ordinary person non spiritual person and a spiritual person is that the spiritual person is aware of all this mess that is inside us that is why it is it is difficult you see ignorance is bliss and the ordinary person in his ignorance has nothing to do there is no nothing going on internally in that mind there is no struggle he has assumed already that i am the smartest creature in the world i am the you know most beautiful thing that nature has produced and i am perfect in every way and whatever he does is his style <laughs> whatever bs he is after is his smartness is perfect life for them it is not so perfect for a seeker and we know each and everything that is going on in the mind and it is you know hell there and that's why many people drop off from this spiritual path because they encounter themselves there is no bigger disappointment than this <laughs> you think the spiritual path is going to make you like a pure heavenly being angel no if you are not careful it will make you it, it can turn you into a crazy person because shows everything there is in the mind shows how dark the mind is the awareness will bring everything into light yes it will bring the good parts also it will bring up the good parts also and it will bring up the bad also now you are obviously not going to worry about the good it's good everything is okay there the bad is going to trouble you the demon is inside us there is no demon outside it is just a state of mind so we know it is there and that's why there is this war going on in the mind of the seeker it is a battlefield and uh, the truth is there will be less peace in your mind compared to before although it is only an illusion a seeker will never want to go back to that peace the peace of darkness will never want to go back there he is going to accept the mess that is there that is happening in the mind he will not go back you can try yes i'll go back to my previous ignorant lifestyle all the attachments bondages uh, ignorance and uh, habitual behavior like a robot zombie and you won't be able to stay there for more than 2 days it is you know guaranteed no because once it is seen it is seen it is done that's why I'm, sometimes i jokingly say that uh, now i have told you what you are now it is not my responsibility what is going to happen in your life <laughs> now i'm running away now it is your mess because i know it's it feels very very nice i am atman and i am brahman and so on wow everything you know it's very freeing knowledge it is your direct experience it is not a belief so very certain knowledge and then and then the real thing appears after a few days well i am everything then why is there suffering why is there suffering in the world also because because initially the mind is going to uh, reject whatever is inside you see it will look at it is habitual of looking outside so well it is it looks so shiny from your uh, advait point of view but look at the world it's a mess it's a hell so it it will see the problems outside initially and then the body will come in the way oh no, no, no this is you know the body demands food demands this demands that it needs to sleep it gets tired it gets diseased you need to clean it there is lust now is suddenly you are fighting the body <laughs> why why won't it stop doing this thing the habits of the body and then you say okay it is part of the mother nature let it do there is ego then now ego is the greatest hurdle for any seeker and this must be your own experience body can be tamed the world you can you can arrange things so that it does not trouble you too much you see if you remain okay peaceful and uh, friendly with everybody so it's okay it's not going to trouble you the body can be tamed a little bit body is a robot so can be when you encounter the ego then this question will come then this failure will happen because ego is about survival and survival is the greatest force in the universe good luck trying to control that 
this kind of looks impossible and therefore the liberation is ending the ego death of the ego is defined as liberation there is nothing more to achieve here nothing more and that too the ego is not going to die it will go on live when the body goes and that's why not taking another birth is a part of the liberation